100 to 300 milligrams a day or every two days can be run for six months straight and you don't have to go off. But for your mental state, I suggest some time off, friend. So guys, Derek, moreplatesmoreleads.com. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a blog called GH15 Bible. So this is a bunch of people have been asking me to cover the posts in it lately. And I don't know if it's just to like legitimately review the claims made in it and like analyze whether I think they're accurate or not, or if it's to like, I don't know, just like bring to the public that some of the stuff is ridiculous. Like, I'm not really sure why there's so many requests for me to cover it but I guess it's very polarizing content, so I can see why it'd be interesting nonetheless. So, you know, fuck, I'll cover it. You know, it's, it's stuff I used to look at back in the day, and I used to think it was like 100% legitimate because, you know, there are very few sources of information on the internet back in the day when I was first learning. And remember, I made the video recently about my worst cycle experiences and I talk about, <laughs> I uh, joke about the veterans in the community who would be like, <laughs> be like, shut the fuck up and take your 500 megs of test uh, as like your base. And that's like no nothing less than that is even like worth using. And that is the kind of stuff that was on the internet back in the day. And uh, you know, the GH15 Bible is another thing that a lot of people deferred to. It's kind of like the secrets of the pros and like how to get like massive kind of thing. So there's this giant blog and maybe I'll make a few of these depending on what the response is to this one. But one of the main things this guy would have a heavy uh, focus on is the importance of Trenbolone and GH. And, you know, GH15 being his name, I believe it was because the sweet spot in his head for GH was 15 IU per day kind of thing, which I don't believe to be the case. But anyways, so he was like a huge Trenbolone advocate and would talk about how it's like literally the secret. It would like morph your physique. It's what makes separates a pro from not a pro. It's what makes guys like absolutely fucking insane. And um, yeah, he had like a bunch of short little blog articles about like what it can do, like how to take it properly and blah, blah, blah. So um, like I mentioned, a bunch of people wanted me to cover it. So I thought today for the uh, just like a little intro teaser, I would cover his advice on trend and how long it should be used. So he has one post called for how long can trend be used? And now one thing I should say before we start is this was posted in 2011. So, you know, like at the time, maybe this was actually believed to be like high quality information. Like I can say for certain when I look back at my content from even a year ago, but like definitely like two years ago, three years ago, like I feel like I'm an idiot compared to now. And I'm sure in a year I might even think I'll probably think I'm much dumber in this video than I am a year from now. And like, you know, that's my kind of like evolution as I, you know, educate myself more and dig into research and kind of just like, you know, absorb shit like a sponge, you know, you're continuously evolving and becoming more intelligent. So like this, this is nine year old publication. So would this guy still advocate this today? I don't really know. And there are a lot of individuals I know who are like pretty health oriented now that actually have good information that used to put out stuff that objectively right now, if you looked at it now, you'd be like, that guy is a moron. He put out garbage, misinformation that is dangerous. You know, there are a lot of, you know, like gurus in the industry that have shifted their recommendations very, very significantly over the years because they literally learned more stuff. And like back in the day, stuff they believed to be true or safe or whatever simply isn't the case now. So I don't know if that's the case with this guy or not, but he doesn't really, from what I understand, doesn't have a good reputation in terms of like, I don't know, like being a, I don't fucking know. Like I don't actually know who it is to be honest, but like people I'm friends with don't seem to like this, <laughs> like this guy, whoever he is. So uh, anyways, I, I don't know for certain if he uh, still publishes even, like this is a nine year old post, like I said, but anyways, let's get into it. So he says, for how long can Trent Ace be used? 100 to 300 milligrams a day or every two days can be run for six months straight and you don't have to go off. But for your mental state, I suggest some time off, friend. 100 to 300 milligrams every day or two will make your physique move heads anywhere you go, with shirt and without shirt. You will be stopped and be compl complimented and asked what you do. You will say you take steroids. <laughs> uh, like you would fucking do that. They will say, is Diana Bulla good? Now, this is the guy who like, he like adds like, like weird like endings to names you'll be like uh prima bolina like uh test 
testosterone propionata, like fucking weird shit like that. Di Diana Bola, Trembolona. I don't know if this is the one who, the guy made up Trembolonia sandwiches, but um, I could see that based on the way he's saying this shit. They will say, is Diana Bola good? You will say, Trembolona is. They will say, so, is that Diana Bola good? I heard it's good. You will say, look, moron, <laughs> it is Trembolona is. And they will then wait a second, and while you go drink water in the fountain, ask, dot, dot, dot. So if I can take double the dose Diana Bologna, <laughs> you think it will do me well? That's just what you deal with. Bunch of morons that want to be bodybuilders. Got to learn to live with it, friend. GH15 approved. So, like, back in the day, this was seen as, like, gospel, interestingly enough. So, like, can you imagine the situation in real life? Like, you're actually at the gym lifting... You're at the drinking fountain, some guy's like, So, is Diana Bull good? Or they say, they say, What do you do? And you turn around and you say, I take steroids. <laughs> like, do you think you would actually fucking do that in real life? And then their answer to that is not like, Oh, like, cool. Is Diana Bull a good? <laughs> you say, No, no, Trenbolona is. Trenbolona is. Because that's definitely what happens. So anyways, what do I think about the, the besides the funny, uh, the weird fucking scenario here. What do I think about the dosage? I think it's fucking insane. I think it's absolutely mental. I do not think you need nearly this much, nor do I think the duration of exposure makes any sense whatsoever. And I think you will definitely be in a fucked up mental state if you're running it for six months on end every year. Like, it seems like every video is somehow it's like turning into a trend below like mental state video. <laughs> I'm just realizing in the past two weeks, I've done like five videos on like trend below somehow. So, uh, no, like, uh, if I was to use it, it would be for very, very token scenarios for very, very specific outcomes that are not just like building mass in the off season. If I'm just trying to drive protein expression and hypertrophy, I am not going to be wasting my brain and of, and like my organs on trend alone unnecessarily when I can acqu literally accrue the exact same amount of lean muscle mass with a more well-tolerated drug that actually is not going to make me think that the entire world is trying to kill me like that it is not the ideal compound for the off season whatsoever and even during a contest prep there's a lot of bodybuilders who just like can't use it or don't use it because they just some of them can get away with you know not using it. it's not the most necessary drug like everyone seems to think it is it's not like you will it's not going to make or break if you you know become a pro or not a pro there are other compounds that can create similar looking looks on stage. Like maybe, okay, you know, there's a bit of a debate on that, but there are a lot of pros who, you know, will talk about how, you know, they used to use trend and they were surprised even when they stopped using it and they still produce like winning physiques on stage. Like I think John Meadows is a good example of a guy who used to really use trend like quite consistently in his contest preps. And then he realized that, oh, if I just don't use it, I can still get that fucking grain train look that he is, uh, you know, famous for. So, you know, is it necessary? Like, I don't know, maybe some guys, you know, to produce a look that is competitive, maybe it's a bit more, I don't know, like there's a, there's a fucking time and place and it certainly is not six months a year for your off season, in my opinion, nor are these dosages sensical whatsoever, like 100 milligrams to 300 milligrams a day or every two days. Like at the very low end of that range is like what I would consider high as fuck still, or at, you know, like pretty fucking high for the majority of people. Like you're 100 milligrams every two days. You're looking at 400 a week, like of ACE. That's not small, you know, maybe back in the day, it was considered a newbie dose 300. Of, like I remember back in the day, it was like, just like the test. It was like, if you don't use 500 tests, like what the fuck are you even doing with your life? That's the base. You have anything else on top of it has to go on 500 tests or else you're not fucking doing shit. So back in the day, it was like, if you're not using 300 trend ACE, and if you're on enanthate 400 because of the ester weight, it would be considered like you're just wasting it, which is not the case, dude. It's so fucking potent. You don't necessarily need that much. A lot of people don't need it. Most people don't need this compound whatsoever. So I'm not trying to like shit on it too hard. Like, I guess I am, but I mean like, it gets way too much hype, I think, especially in an off-season, like, muscle-building context. It's such an incredible recomp agent. Yes, I will acknowledge that. But as far as, like, literally building up your body, the whole point of the off-season, building as much muscle as possible, you would be hard-pressed, I feel like, to find a lot of top pros who, like, rely on it as their, like, 
long-term, dependable, sustainable option for anab accruing anabolic activity on top of their test base. Not a lot of people depend on it for actual gaining muscle in a sustainable way that is going to be healthy long-term. Most guys know that it is going to be the you know last ditch thing to add into a contest prep to achieve a certain look and to achieve this sort of like anti-catabolic recomp crazy fucking you know trend balloon effect that is not really necessary in the off season. So no, I think this is an absolutely insane recommendation, especially just generally thrown out like that for like the average user. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Were you uh, part of the era that referred to uh, GH15 stuff? Um, let me know what you think about it. Maybe I'll do some more videos on some of the, uh, I don't know, some of his like most notable like statements and stuff. I don't know. Cause like I almost like fell into the trap of some of this guy's shit too. Like back in the day, cause I learned enough and I was also too scared to even like, I probably couldn't even afford it actually too at the time. Maybe I, like I probably saw this and was like, damn, like I wish I could do that. So like back in the day though, like even I looked at this guy's shit and was like, so that's the secret. It's just 50 and I use a GH and a fuck ton of trend. <laughs> that's like you, you don't really know until you do it. And then you realize that it's not the secret. And like, fortunately for me, I never pushed my body like that hard to find out that it wasn't the secret, but I did push it enough. I think the highest my weekly dosage was, was probably like one and a half grams total, probably about there. Eh, one and a half to two grams maybe. And it was like, I experienced no additional growth than I did on my more like reasonable, like mild cycles where I was not like all factors equated it was not like significantly different. And in fact, I had such a greater burden of stress on my body that I think, like I actually know for a fact, I did make less gains. Now, obviously you could say, you know, the first cycles are your newbie cycles, so you gain way more. And then the subsequent ones, you're gonna gain less than the first ones, obviously. So you need a higher dose to yield the better outcome. And it's like, yeah, obviously in a dose dependent manner, steroids are going to build more muscle and the higher the dose, the more likely you're going to be to build muscle. Yes, but it's like, there's a point where it's like, <laughs> The oxidative stress and the fucking burden on your body relative to what you're actually gaining, it's and like the drug choice and as well, it just like for me, when I went that high, it was just like such a fucking excessive burden on my body that it was like just unnecessary for my goals in particular. I was not trying to be an open top bodybuilder, nor could my body even make use of that much compound for it to be fucking justifiable whatsoever so anyways um yeah that's uh just my little tangent like some of the, some of the shit too like back in the day man like i was like oh so that's that's what i gotta strive to get to dosage wise to actually get to you know 260 lean like i have to do this somehow and like fortunately i never went that far but i even remember like some of the forums i was on there'd be guys who were like you know like eq it's like the best compound but you have to run it at like 1500 milligrams is the sweet spot and 700 is the minimum you can use before it's effective at all. Like, that's just nuts, dude. Like, back in the day, that was some of the shit. I was like, I'd be like, okay. And then, like, in my head, I'd be like, okay. So, like, don't even run EQ if it's not 700 milligrams. Like, that's literally the kind of shit that was going around. So, anyways, let me know uh, if you have any other, like, just, like, random off-the-cuff, like, rules that you knew, like, back in the day that are just, like, disproven now or just, like, ridiculous drop them down for shits and giggles and for educational material for people because i bet you a lot of people do believe some of the shit still that are new to this and it would be useful to drop them down and blow some myths out of the water that uh people can you know realize are not actually true because a lot of people even people who like i know personally i'll be like do you even watch my shit because they'll say something that's like a super bro lore myth that i learned about like years ago i'm like that is still circulating in the community like fuck, dude so any like bro lore myths you've heard of that are either funny or educational, drop them down. It'll uh, help somebody for sure. So thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, check out my blog, moreplates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchy, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. Uh, my TRT clinic, girl of mine, girl of mode, pre-workout formulas. I designed myself from scratch and anything else I am associated with. It's all in the video description below. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.